Hello and welcome to the DockerCon Cube coverage here on the main stage. Suhindra Rao, Development Manager at JFrog. Welcome to the Cube. You guys have been on many times uh, with JFrog on the Cube. Great product. You guys are doing great. Congratulations on all the six. Thanks for coming on the Cube. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So I'm really interested in talking about the supply chain uh, package management supply chain and software workflow, huge discussion. This is one of the hottest issues that's being solved on by, with, with in DevOps and DevSecOps in, in the planet. It's all over, the, all over the news. A real challenge, open source is growing so fast and so successful with cloud scale and with automation. As you guys know, you got you to know what's trusted. So you got to build trust into the, the product itself so developers don't have to do all the rework. Everyone kind of knows this right now. And this is a key solve problem you guys are solving. So I got to ask you, what is the package management issue? Why is this such an important topic when you're talking about security? Yeah, uh, so if you look at, uh, look at how software is built today, about 80 to 90% of that is open source. And currently, the way we the way we pull those open source libraries, we just we just have blind trust in in repositories that are central, and we rely on whatever mechanisms they have built to to establish that trust uh, with the developer who is building it. And from from our experience, uh, we have learned that that is not sufficient. Uh, that is not sufficient to tell us that that particular developer built that end product, and uh, whatever code that they built is actually coming out in the end product. So we need we need something to bridge that gap. We need we need a trustworthy mechanism there to bridge that gap. And there are there are a few other uh, elements to it. Um, all these central repositories are prone to uh, single point of failures, and you know, in we have all experienced what happens when one of those goes down, and how it stops production, and how it how it stops just software uh, development, right? And we what we are working on is. How do we build a system where we we can actually have uh, liquid software as reality and just continue to build software regardless of all these systems uh, being live all the time uh, and also have a an implicit uh, way of mechanism to trust uh, what is coming out of those systems. You know, we've talked with you guys in the past about the building blocks of software and what flows through the pipelines. All that stuff's part of what is automated these days and, and, and important. And what I got to ask you because security these days is like, don't trust anything. You know, um, mm -hmm. here it's, you're, you're trusting software to be in essence verified. I'm simplifying obviously. So I got to ask you what is being done to solve this problem because states change. You know, you got data, you got software injections and you got, you know, we got containers and Kubernetes right here helping. All this is on the table now, but what is currently being done to solve the problem? Because it's really hard. Yeah, it is, it is a really hard problem. And currently, right, when we do develop software, we have a team uh, which, which we work with and we trust whatever is coming out of that team. And we have, we have a, uh, a, what do you call, certified uh, pr production mechanism to build that software and actually release it to our customers. And when it is done in-house, it is easy because we, are, we control all the pieces. Now, what happens when, when we are doing this with open source. We don't have that chain. We need that chain, which is independent, which is independent of where the software was you know, produced versus where it is going to be used. We need a way to have provenance of how it was built, which parts actually went in uh, making, uh, making the end product, uh, and, uh, and what are the things that we see are, uh, are uh, continuing, uh, uh, continuing evidences that this software can be used. So if there is a vulnerability that is discovered, now that is discovered and it is uh, released in some database and we need to do corrective action to say that this vulnerability is associated with this version and there is no there's no automated mechanism. So we are working on an automated mechanism where, where you can run a command which will tell you what has happened with this piece of uh, software, this version of it, and whether it is production worthy or not. It's a great goal, I got to say, but I'll tell you, I can guarantee there's going to be a ton of skeptics on this. Security people, oh, no, no, I doubt it's going to always a backdoor. Um, what's the relationship with Docker? How do you guys see this evolving? Obviously, it's a super important mission. Um, it's not a trend that's going to go away. Supply chain software is here to stay. Um, it's not going to go away. And we saw this in hardware, and everyone kind of knows kind of what happens when you see these vulnerabilities. Um, you got to have trusted software, right? This is going to yeah. be continuing. What's the relationship with DockerCon? What are you guys doing with Docker in here at DockerCon? So we, when we actually started working on this project, uh, both Docker and uh, JFrog had had similar ideas in mind of how how do we make this uh, this trust mechanism available to anyone uh, who wants it, whether they are whether they are in, interacting with Docker Hub or or regardless of that, right? And how do we actually make it 
a mechanism uh, that just uh, uh, that just provides this kind of uh, this kind of trust uh, without without the developer having to do something. Uh, so what we worked with uh, with Docker is actually integrating um, integrating our solution so that anywhere there is uh, there is uh, Docker uh, being used currently, uh, people don't have to change those uh, those behaviors or change those code. Uh, those code lines, uh, right? Uh, because changing hand, uh, changing this a single line of code in hundreds of systems, hundreds of AI systems, is going to be really hard. Uh, and we wanted to build a seamless integration between Docker and the solution that we are building, uh, so that so that you can continue to do Docker pull and Docker push, and but get uh, get all the benefits of the supply chain security solution that we have. Okay, so let's step back for a minute and let's discuss about the pro. What is the project, and where's the commercial JFrog? Docker intersect. Take a break that hard. Just talk about the project first. What's the intended ah. goals? What is the project? Where is it? How do people get involved? And how does that intersect with the commercial interests of JFrog and Docker? Yeah, yeah. My favorite topic to talk about. So the, the project is called Persia. Uh, Persia is uh, is an open source project. It is it is an effort that started with JFrog and uh, and Docker, but by no means limited to just JFrog and Docker contributing. We already have five companies contributing. Uh, we are actually building a working product. Uh, which we'll demo during uh, during our uh, our talk, and there is more to come. There's more to come. It is being built iteratively, and and the solution is basically to provide a decentralized mechanism, uh, similar to similar to how how you uh, do things with Git, so that you have you have the uh, the packages that you are using available at your nearest peer. Uh, there is also going to be a multi-node build verification mechanism, uh, and all of the information about the packages that you are going to use will be available on a provenance log. So you can always query that and find out what is the latest state, state of affairs, what vulnerabilities were discovered and make make quick decisions. And you don't have to react after the fact, after it has been in the news for a while. Uh, so you can react to cu your customers needs um, uh, as quick as they happen. And we feel that the, our emphasis on open source is key here because uh, given our experience, you know, 80 to 90% of software that is packaged contains open source and there is no way for currently which we uh, are no engineering mechanisms currently that give us that uh, that confidence that whatever we are building and whatever we are dependencies we are pulling is actually worthwhile uh, putting it into, it into production i mean you really it's a great service i mean you think about like all that's coming out open source open source has become very social too people are starting projects just to code and get get in the in the community and hang out uh and just get in the fray and just do stuff. And then you see venture capitals coming in, funding those projects. It's a new economic system as well, not just code. So I can see this pipelining beautifully up for scale. How do people get involved with this project? Because again, my, my question is all going to be around integration, how frictionless it is. That's going to be the challenge you mentioned that. So I can see people getting involved. What's, what's, how do people join? What do they do? What can they do here yeah. at DockerCon? Yeah, uh, so we have a website, uh, persia.io, P-Y-R-S-I-A.io. And you'll find all kinds of information there. Uh, we have a GitHub presence. Uh, we have community meetings that are open to public. We are all we are all uh, doing this under the uh, under the umbrella of Linux Foundation. We are a bootstrap project within Linux Foundation. Uh, so people who have interest in in all these areas can come in, just just attend those meetings, uh, add uh, you know add comments, or just attend our standups. So we are running it like a like a agile scrum. Uh, process. We are doing stand-ups. We are doing retrospectives, and we are we are doing planning, and and we are we are iteratively building this. So what you will see at DockerCon is is just a, a little bit of a teaser of what we have built so far, and what you what you can expect to uh, uh, see in in future such events. So Hidra, thanks for coming on the queue. We got 30 seconds left. Put a quick plug in for the Swamp Up coming up. Yeah. Uh, so we we will talk a lot more about Persia and our open source efforts and how we would like you all to collaborate. We'll be at Swamp Up in San Diego on May 26th, uh, May 24th to 26th. Uh, so hope to see you there. Hope to discuss more about Persia and and see what you will do with uh, with this project. Thank All you. Right. All right, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Back to the main stage. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE. Thanks for watching. Thank you.